Well, Caitlin with Justified wrapping up its run a few weeks ago, you were a recurring guest star over the years. Just tell us, I guess, first of all, how did you get that role of Loretta? Um, I got, I remember auditioning for it. Um, I think I was 13 uh, when I first auditioned. And I remember just getting the sides and thinking, whoa, this I've never gotten anything like this before. Um, I knew of the show. Um, I had never watched an episode, but I knew from, you know, reading the script and reading the sides, even at a young age, that was such like an amazing opportunity to have because, again, I never had, you know, auditions come my way where the characters are so complex like Loretta was. Um, and I was told at the time, I was told that I was only supposed to be in one or two episodes and the character was just going to be there for a few episodes and then going to be gone. Um, and then I, you know, I got the part and I did the episodes and then they kept bringing me back and they kept bringing me back and my character became this bigger um, character and the story became more complex for her. Uh, and her journey just like grew and grew and grew and it ended up being like this thing that was bigger than I ever expected. So it was really- was the second season, right? The second season of the show was when you came on? Yes, the second season. Um, and that's when I met Margot and that's, yeah, second season. You were a major part of that storyline, and she went on to win an Emmy Award uh, later that summer. <laughs> yeah, I was. I remember watching that uh, on on TV. I remember watching her accept her award, and I was so happy for her because she is truly. I can't. I can't even tell you how amazing she was, and especially I was so young, and being able to work with her. And, and and everyone else on Justified. I mean, Timothy, getting to work with him, but we're getting getting to work with Margot because most of my scenes were with her. She was, I learned so much from her, just in the way that, you know, she was always sort of getting into character and everything she did was like thought out. And um, she was just, she really just transformed herself to become a completely different person because in real life she is like the sweetest nicest woman ever but she's very mean on the show well she was mean to some people but she really she took a to liking to your character yeah yeah she was a very she was a very like motherly figure towards loretta now the following year a guy a character who loretta just got under the skin of uh <laughs> was played by jeremy davies uh, he won an Emmy the next year in the guest yeah. category. Tell me about working with him. He is absolutely, I can't even, I can't even, oh my God. He is, first of all, I, I have to, I, I, I feel like I keep saying this, but everyone, and I'm not even kidding, everyone on that show is so nice. And it was a really, it was just a really, really great experience. Um, but working with Jeremy, again, like he always was putting 100% into his role. Um, I don't know if I, I mean, I did get to do, I wish I, you know, I wish I got to do more scenes with him. Um, but I just think he, he just does his character so well, especially in this last season. Um, that one scene where you see him <laughs> in jail and uh, he, I mean, he was, he's just, he plays the craziest guy ever and he does it so well. Now, after that second season, we saw you, you know, on occasion, but not very often. Mm -hmm. uh, but this last season, you have another big major arc uh, with all these other guest stars that brought in this season, especially Sam Elliott, who won uh, the Critics' Choice Award last night. Yeah. I, I love it when a veteran actor like that, or Margot, who's been yeah. working a long time, finally gets some recognition. What, yeah. what, uh, what would you think about that win last night, and what was it like working with him? Oh, God, I'm so happy for him, first of all. Um, he, 
he his voice is very intimidating. I have to say, he's very. Well, you hear it all day long on radio and TV, you know. Yeah, um, but I had actually seen him. Me and my dad, my first experience watching a Western film was Tombstone, and so and and me and my dad watched it together. So it was a kind of like a memorable experience, and that's one of my favorite westerns. But he Sam Elliott is in it and so I was kind of freaking out when I first met him um, but again he is the nicest guy and uh, we were doing the scene where he first comes to Loretta's house and I cannot tell you how my, my jaw just like dropped when he started speaking um, it was like I was transformed into this other world it was crazy he's such a good actor and um, Again, he was like really supportive with like me on set, and um, he was really, really great. And I'm so happy that he won last night. Well, and you give somebody an actor like that who already has a great voice this kind of you know Elmore Leonard dialogue. Right, it's like honey dripping off of his voice. Oh my God, it's amazing! It's amazing to watch. I just, I just, I felt like I, I felt like I stopped acting for a second because I'm still like in the scene and I, I felt like for a second I would just like stop and just be myself and <laughs> watch him just do this amazing thing in front of me but um, it, it was hard to stay in character. <laughs> well and I would imagine too I mean you know you're an actress and you know he's an actor but you know when he's making those kind of threats to you especially toward the end of the season I mean I, I'm sure that you know that was sending chills up your spine. Yeah, he's he's very, definitely very uh, chilling and creepy. That whole part where he uh, asks me to test the glass with my pinky, that was really creepy and weird. And I think everyone else was weirded out by it too. Um, but yeah, he definitely has that feeling. Not in I real life. One little piece of homework for you, since you saw him in Tombstone. I'm a big fan of like older TV shows. Go back, find. I think you can probably find this online somewhere. Uh -huh. Find an episode where he was a regular on Mission Impossible back in the 60s. And you get really? to see like the 25 or 26 year old version of Sam Elliott and you won't even believe it's him. Oh, wow. I And then I actually didn't know Mission Impossible was a, a TV show. Yeah, back in the, that, that's where it started back in the 60s. It was part, wow. back then they had all these spy shows and that was what it was, so. That's so cool. Yeah, you'll. He he was only a regular, maybe around the fourth or fifth season, just for one season. But but oh, find cool. one of those because you'll be shocked. Oh my god! Okay, I will. Now I will this it. season one, I think maybe your showcase episode was the uh, had you in the bar making the big speech about how how they shouldn't go with him and they should go with you. They're talking about the town. Yeah. Tell tell us just about getting that script. You had to just be salivating over that script. Yeah, uh, it was. It was very nerve-wracking. I have to say that that was probably the most nerve-wracking experience I've ever had on that show. Um, because, like, when I was younger, I guess, you know, when you're younger, you don't really realize things that you don't realize, things that you are scared of, but, but you're scared of now, or something like that. Like, it, I feel like when I started on Justified, you know, it seemed pretty easy in terms of just performing on set in front of people and in front of Margot and Timothy and um, but now that scene shooting that scene I was just like I could hear my heart beating and you know because I have to get up and present this giant speech and act all tough and um, be the way Loretta would be in that moment and so <laughs> Um, I had just had a scene, my first scene with Walton Goggins, a couple of, I think it was a week or two before that, and I remember that was the very first time I got nervous in front of someone <laughs> on Justified. That was the very first time I was like, whoa, I'm really nervous right now. Um, I don't know what it was about Walton, I think, because he, the way he, like, the way he talks and the way he sort of, like, he he can talk you down in two seconds um, when he's in his character. And so I think that that's what was like scary. And that's when I really knew that, oh my God, he's like really getting into this character. Um, so I had just experienced that. So 
when it was time to do the scene in the pizza portal with my big speech, Walton Goggins was there. <laughs> and I was doing the speech in front of him. Then I've got Timothy in the back watching me. And then I've got a speech that I'm yelling at towards Sam Elliott. So it was all very nerve wracking. But, um, and the dialogue too, you know, I wanted to get it perfect. And so I worked on it for a long time. But uh, yes, uh, to go back to what you were saying, I was just like salivating over that because it was such an amazing opportunity for me as an actor and also for Loretta. Well, that's the kind of showcase because the show is very popular. I mean, even beyond whatever auditions and reels mm -hmm. and things you put together. I mean, that's just something that people in the industry are going to see and go, that might be the girl for our next movie or our next TV show or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Jonathan Tucker, we interviewed him a few weeks ago. You, you'll be in a guest category. He'll be in a guest category for the Emmy ballots this summer. But he, I told him at the time, and you probably had to think about this too when he came on board. I remember the first moment I saw him, maybe after the first scene, thinking, and I told him this. I said, you know, the show is wrapping up. There's only like five episodes yeah. to go at that point. <laughs> And you're, and I'm thinking to the producers out, out loud or in my head going, you're actually going to bring in a new character and make us try to feel something about him. And yet yeah. he was able to make that character his own and, and really make the audience, you know, um, excited to see him. But I guess I say all that to say, boy, was he obsessed with, with Loretta. I mean, he was just <laughs> had an obsession. What was that like to a play weird obsession. You know, and, and that? Yeah. Um, well, I sort of, you know, <clears throat> I thought the same thing, but I always, I, you know, I always <clears throat> know that the writers, you know, they always have something up their sleeves. So I know that they were going to do something awesome with Jonathan's character. Um, yeah, he and he was also uh, Tucker. He was very, um, he was very grateful to just be there. And he um, was a fan of the show beforehand, and but he was just... He didn't, you know, I don't think he even cared how many episodes or how late in the game he was being um, introduced. I think that he was just really grateful to be there. And um, I remember the first scene that we did, it was a scene where he comes into the pizza portal and I'm with Timothy and uh, that's when Timothy's character first meets Tucker. Um, and I remember af after like his first take, me and Timothy like looked at each other and we're just like, yeah, I know. Like he's, he is incredible. Um, and especially like he was super like helpful with like running lines with me, um, you know, when we were just not doing a take for a second. Um, but yeah, he was, he was incredible and getting to do scenes with him too. And it was also a challenge as well. Uh, Cause he's so like, he, his character is very, very fast and he thinks very, very fast. And so you kind of have to be on your toes as well. Um, and he was really good about that. Well, both he and Graham talked about the fact that this, not, not in terms of the, their type of, um, you know, one went good, one went bad, but he was basically the 20 year younger version of what Raylan could have been. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and Graham is, I have to say, Graham is the most brilliant guy I've ever met. I mean, the things that he writes and the things that he comes up with are just extraordinary. I don't even know. I, I could never do what he does but um, I've been so lucky to have the privilege to work with him. And we've mentioned Timothy several times, obviously the star of the show, but over the years he moved up in status and all, by the end he was one of the executive producers. It sounds like some of the guys on the show and, and, and ladies on the show you know, are very intense, very much in character, but I, I've, I think I've heard over the years that while he could be that way, he was also pretty loose. He is a Making very- Making feel comfortable. Yeah. But I, I did learn so much from him. Um, I remember paying attention to more what he did over the years and working with him. Um, he is very loose, but he can. He's kind of like I. I'm sort of like him in in ways where I can. 
I don't have to be in character like the entire day. I can, you know, get in and out of it pretty quickly, but he is he will be doing a scene and then we'll go over to the writer's section or video village and start discussing, you know, a storyline for six episodes later and discussing how he can make his character work or other characters work or just always talking about Justified, not doing anything else. Like he is, he's always trying to make the show and his character and everyone else's character the best it can be. And I really noticed that um, the whole entire time I, I worked with him, I was like, wow, he is, he's probably one of the hardest working actors I've ever worked with, honestly. Um, Cause he's just always, always working. And then at the end of the day, you know, he's done and he goes home and he's got three kids that he's always talking about. and his wife and it's like he's just an amazing guy to watch and uh, look up to and then the finale which we saw a few weeks ago mm -hmm. now correct me if i'm wrong here but it, like a day or two later after i was kind of still processing it i thought did caitlin even have one word of dialogue in that finale i don't think you did no and but you were on screen a lot it wasn't like you it was like it was a almost a purposeful thing where they, they wanted to see if they could really make you compelling without actually saying anything. Yeah, I think it was. I think I, I, I did, I, I remember watching it for the first time um, at our premiere in LA. And uh, yeah, I don't say anything in the, in the last episode, but I think it was really cool to see because, you know, I feel like Loretta's always opening her mouth and saying something. Um, so it was nice to see because she does do a lot. She like. Yeah, it's not like you're a cameo or anything. Yeah, no, she, no, she it's, it, it's, uh, she does do a lot in that episode. And I was thinking about it too afterwards. I was like, I didn't really say anything. I didn't say anything at all, actually. But I, I feel like my character was, had something to do with that storyline and that shootout at the very end. I'm so glad I got to just be there, even just like be in the background of that scene. I well, no, you're not just in the background in that. Well, scene. no, you, but you even have, you have a really, you know. But I think the no dialogue really, the, the less dialogue in that scene, the better. Not just from you, but from everybody, because in your in your case, uh, without giving away a whole lot to people that haven't seen it, I mean, mm -hmm. you are you are probably just truly stunned at what's going on. And right. then you get the last sort of uh, the, the last moment there in Boone's life. Right. That, that was definitely a thing that we had discussed with um, our director for that episode, Adam Arkin, who is incredible. Um, he, we were talking about how that look needs to be very distinct when I first, you know, when I basically like watch him die and I, uh, we were talking about it and it's like you kind of you kind of feel you kind of feel angry but you also kind of feel sad now that he's gone and it's just a whole mix of emotions happening in just that one look so that was very challenging um but also getting to like step on his hand and sort of save him from save you know uh Raylan from getting shot again uh was definitely very cool. Um, and in that moment when you first get out of the truck, you don't know what's, you don't know if Raylan's dead or not yet either. Right. That was a really scary moment. I think everyone was like, I, I remember listening to the audience uh, at the LA premiere when, you know, the audience was just got completely silent. Like you could hear a pen drop. It was so silent. And then they were wondering what happened to Raylan. And then he gets up and everyone kind of like claps and cheers and, it was a really big moment, and uh, it was very sweet. Well, you can, uh, uh, Graham and the other producers and writers, I mean, you could pull that kind of a moment off with real fear for the character in a finale, whereas you couldn't have pulled, you know, in any other episode over the course of the run, people would know right. that we're not killing off the star. Yeah, yeah. But in exactly. a finale, well, maybe. I know, it could have happened. It totally could have happened. Um, but, yeah, the writers did such an amazing job with the finale. I really think that everything they did was so on point with that that scene especially uh the shootout scene it was 
Oh, it looked so good, first of all, the way Adam directed it. It looked so good. Um, it looked like a classic, like, old Western shootout, which is what Graham and the writers wanted, and also Adam Arkin as well. Um, it, yeah, everything they did was just so thought out and so great. It was so, so good. Well, listen, we've enjoyed you on the show over the years, and, and uh, I know I speak for some fans, I'm sure, every time you'd make an appearance, it would be, oh, good, Loretta's back, um, <laughs> and especially this past season. So, listen, you're one of the only guest stars from the show based on some new rules that, that had messed up people like Sam and Mary Steenberg, and they can't be in the guest categories anymore. So it's basically uh, uh, mostly you and Jonathan Tucker here. And uh, you know the show's won guest Emmys before, so we're going to see what happens, I guess. Yeah, that would be really, really exciting. But again, I'm just, I've said this th the whole time, like I'm just happy to be able to be a part of uh, this show. It's such a hardworking, uh, everyone, everyone on the set is just so, every single person, that's, that's a great feeling to have on set when you're, when you know that every single person is just working at one thing and working towards one thing and um, making sure that everyone is a hundred percent. And it it's it's a really it's been a really really great experience, especially a a really amazing experience to work like uh, work and grow up on a show like this. Uh, I feel like when I was. 13 I didn't really realize it but now I'm so glad I got the chance to grow up on a show like this um, I remember Graham saying at our very last day on set was very sad and emotional um, and I was there on the very last day they were shooting justified at all so it was like a big moment um, but I remember Graham sort of giving a speech to the whole crew and um, and he said when he was like saying his final words for me. Uh, he said, we had a, a little 12-year-old, 13-year-old girl come on our show and selling weed, and <laughs> and now she drove herself to work today. And it was like, oh my god, I, I started crying. It was very sad. Everyone was crying, but it's been a really great experience. Well, and at your age now, I mean, it's going to be twofold. One is you get to take that experience and you know you've learned from it you grow from it you can use that on all your future projects oh for you'll sure you'll also be comparing all your future projects to uh you know to is this next thing as good as what i was on before i don't think anything ever will be and that's a big statement to make but i'm serious i'm dead serious i don't know if anything will be ever uh, even close to being as good as justified oh you'll find it you'll, maybe not better but maybe something as good maybe I don't know. I'm I'm holding that strong statement that you're not the first person I've told this to. I, <laughs> I, I I'm telling you, it's a great thing. Well, if nothing else, you know Graham's going to do some more shows, so you just latch onto him, and you know it'll be good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much. Good luck on the Emmys this summer. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good